I know that you want to start your weekend off right with some examples about wedge problems. So here's problem nine on the homework. Let's talk through the setup. As per usual, we're going to draw a free body diagram for the wedge and for the cube. Here's the wedge. Here's the cube. They both have weight exerted on them. MC times G in the case of the cube. M wedge times G in the case of the wedge. Uh, there's a normal force on the wedge from the ground that pushes up on the ground, so I'm going to just call that the normal force. On the cube, they, the normal force there is from the wedge, so that's going to sort of go off at this direction. And because I've got these two parts of the system uh, going on, I want to note that this is a normal force from the wedge on the cube. If I draw something with the force of the wedge on the cube, there has to be over here a force of the cube on the wedge. As a result, I'll be able to sort of decompose these and these forces, set f equals ma, solve the problem. Now the trick here, uh, or rather, I find that the easiest thing to do is actually not to set up just one, but a second coordinate system. This is a technique that we try never to use, but this is a case where it's going to save me a lot of trouble. So I'm going to set up a parallel coordinate system up here on the uh, ramp that's sort of oriented in the ramp direction. And the reason I want to do that is that I need to figure out the acceleration of the cube along the ramp. And since the cube moves along the ramp, it moves in the x hat uh, axis. So that means I don't have to decompose my accelerations. And that saves me a lot of grief. And if I think about that particular angle here, then the normal force is just straight in the y direction there. And then I figure out what I have to do. So this is going to be x prime hat and then y prime hat here. I've got to figure out how the mg is going to project into that angle. So I've got to sort of decompose that. And when I think about this, I say, well, what does this angle, as it gets kind of small, then uh, if the wedge were going to shrink down, then this angle here is the one that would shrink down. And that normal force would become opposite the uh, uh, the uh, weight of the object. Yeah. And so what I can do is I can then go ahead and decompose the weight along these axes. I'm going to go ahead and redraw this because I've done a horrible job adding too much here. So there's my normal force. There's my weight. There's the y direction in this coordinate system. There's theta. And then I can decompose the right triangle here. And then that weight decomposes to mg cos theta and mg sine theta. And since this is the force of the cube, or a force of the wedge on the cube, I've got this all set up. And I can write down that the sum of the forces in the y prime direction are equal to the mass of the cube times the acceleration in the y prime direction. And the whole reason I went through this extra parallel or uh, primed axis case is because I want to use the fact that that's 0. It doesn't move up or down through the cube. It moves along it, and that's in the x prime direction. And that is an awesome equation, because then I can take that is equal to f wedge on cube minus mg cos theta. All right, so armed with this equation, we can then go up here to the wedge free body diagram. And in the wedge free body diagram, I'm actually going to use the x-axis because I know I want the answer uh, in that. So I can go ahead and say wedge. And with the wedge, what I can do is write down the sum of the forces in the non-primed axes in the x direction. And that's going to be equal to the, ma oh, uh, the mass of the wedge times the acceleration. And that acceleration is what I'm looking for in this problem. You too, it turns out. I realize I have forgotten a critical MC right here because it's the cube uh, mass that we're applying here. That's the weight.
So given all of that, I can go ahead and do a decomposition of this wedge free body diagram, figure out the directions in the x coordinates, not the x prime coordinates, and solve the acceleration that way. So that's going to simplify my math a bit. I'm not going to do that. You're going to do that. But this is going to give us a chance to sort of get at that. So write down the sum of forces, and then use this relationship up here that we just saw for the wedge to eliminate the magnitude of the uh, cube on wedge force, because from Newton's third law, we know that the magnitude of the cube on the wedge force is equal to the magnitude of the wedge on the cube. So all that, all that is there. And the only tricky part really is to come up with the decomposition, I'm circling the wrong one here, uh, for the wedge. So good luck, and I hope you nail it.